Watch the entire video my lovely viewers, I mean from start to finish, to get the whole thing. Without wasting much of your time, let's get right into it. Hi lovely viewers, it's me again, your one and only Mtati Mpundu. Welcome to my YouTube channel. If this is your first time on my channel, kindly subscribe to my YouTube channel by hitting the red subscribe button down below and turn the bell icon to join the notification squad. Don't forget to like, share and leave a comment. Tell me what you think about this video in the comment section below. I'll be super glad to hear from you lovely viewers. Many of you know that Vachi Shimbakambwili and just to give you some context to bring you up to speed we have to go back a bit for those of you that may not be familiar who uh, Mr. Chishimbakambwili is he is a political opposition leader recently here he was vying for the presidency of the PF a group of uh, hoodlums that I refer to as the notorious patriotic front and over the, over the last, I would say, two or three years, he's been embroiled in some legal troubles, as we all have been. Okay, I'm not sitting here judging him because I'm in, I'm, I'm, in legal, I'm in some legal trouble myself. I'm entangled in some type of litigation myself. So I don't want you to think for one moment that I'm sitting here making fun or, or, or speaking disparagingly about him. What I'm doing is I'm just bringing to the fore what is already in, in the public domain and then just sprinkling it with a bit of sml tv dust that's all we're doing so last several years about say about three two three years vakam really has been embroiled in you know legal troubles litigation in 20 in the year 2020 he was taken to court and found guilty of forgery and he was sentenced to two years for that crime. Of course, he appealed, so he was out on bail pending appeal, which is the way it works. And then here lately, here recently, in 2023, which was last year, he was found guilty of spreading hate speech and speaking disparagingly against the people of Southern Province. Now, he was found guilty over there in Kasama, and you have to understand why he was found guilty. Leading up to the 2021 elections, Bachi Shimbakambwili went on a rampage. He went on a campaign, a desperate one at that, to try and paint the current president, who was an opposition leader at that time, Back in 2021, HH was a political contender. He was vying for the presidency. And Vachishimba Kambuili went crisscrossing across this nation, preaching the gospel of tribalism, is what it was. Let's, let's not sugarcoat it. Now, before I continue, you must understand for those of you that may think that that conviction was mundane, for those of you that think, oh no, he was just talking and, you know, what's the big deal? You know, the word of God says, a little leaven leaveneth the whole lump. In Zambia, we do not know the severity of tribalism because we haven't experienced it. In Zambia, when we talk about tribalism, somehow our people think that it's an insignificant, inconsequential conversation. <laughs> I can assure you, the countries that have borne the brunt of tribalism and they have felt the sting of tribalism have a very different story to tell. You and I have the luxury of sitting in Zambia and joking about tribalism. There are countries in the world, Rwanda, Burundi, there are countries in the world that are literally falling apart at the seams because of tribalism, because of regionalism. The, the, the issue that's happening now in Gaza and Israel, that's teetering on tribalism. It's teetering. 
on on a difference of well you're you're them they're that and I'm this the root cause of that conflict between Israel and Gaza Gaza and Israel the root cause is embedded in the principle of where well, you're different from me you know you you see you, you're different than I am it is a form of tribalism and and correct Sudan as well so w when we see these sentences being meted out never for one moment think that it's it's insignificant it's not never for one moment think that it's inconsequential it's it's it the consequences are dire and they're heavy and so here it is the message that the judicial system was sending to Rakambuili and the rest of us is that don't take tribalism lightly I often say to you and I'll say it again and I will never stop saying it today in Rwanda it is the it is against the law in Rwanda to say the words Hutu and Tutsi they arrest you they lock you up they put you away what do they want you to say they prefer that you say Rwandese they prefer that you use a generic term they don't like it when you begin to regionalize and this is the reason this talk about Barotseland must be crushed must be vanquished because we're one Zambia one nation when I hear people talk about we want to separate we want Barotseland to be alone and the no we don't want that you know why because they are us and we are them like it love it leave it loathe it or hate it that's just the way that it is that's the way our forefathers did it and that's the way we're going to do it so get it out of your minds that Rajashim Makambuili's sentence was underhanded or unfair no it was sending a message one Zambia one nation now what has recently come out is that we're learning now that the government had agreed to evacuate Rakambuili and from the Minister of Health's testimony when I say testimony her account of this event the Minister of Health Honorable Sylvia Masebo seemed to suggest that Tshishimba Kambuili and his family would have preferred that he be evacuated to England now the way these things work guys is that nobody is in any position to demand anything when you request for help and the government gives you help I've never heard of anyone that says well I don't want to go to India I don't want to go to South Africa I would prefer that you evacuate me to to the United Kingdom now the reasons are obvious the reason that Dr. Shimba Kambuili and his family preferred to be taken to in uh, to England is because Dr. Shimba's uh, family is there his wife is there in England but when you're dealing with government help nobody is in any position to demand anything that's just the way it is when you need help and you say to the government government I'm ailing I'm not well I need you to help me when the government says we're gonna extend an, a, 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 a helping hand we're gonna help you and this is the route or the route we're gonna go nobody is any in any position to say oh no I don't want to go where you want to send me government I appreciate your olive branch government I appreciate your benevolence but I don't want to go to India I don't want to go to South Africa I want to go to England see this is this is the conversation that Bachishimba Kambuili's family was having with the government and, and I think that that is it, it speaks volumes it says a lot it, it really says that you know it's that old saying you give someone a mile they take uh, you give someone an inch they take a mile granted guys let's be clear we know that Bachishimba Kambuili is ailing and nobody is happy about that we want to see Bachishimba Kambuili healthy back on his feet we want to see him providing checks and balances uh, to the current administration we want to see him healthy and in our country 
But what we don't want is a situation where anyone feels that they can demand things from the government. None of it. You, me, nobody can do that. So my point is when the government offers their hand of assistance, take it. Take it. Don't demand. Don't say, I don't want to go there. Which is what my Sylvia Maseva was saying. Was she was saying that look, we told them, we told the Kambwili family that it's it's better that we take you to South Africa because it would be easier and it's closer to Zambia. It would be easier for the government. Logistically, it would be better for you to go to South Africa. Oh no. La Kambwili said, No, I don't want to go to South Africa. I don't want to go to India. I want you to send me to England. Well, we don't always get what we want. And then that's just the way, hey Anita, I see you. <laughs> that's just the way the world works. The, the world is a very unfair place. You know, and sometimes when, when you're offered help like that, count your blessings, reach out and grab it, you know. Now, aside from that, Lachi Shimbakambwili has, there's no other way of saying it. He has made himself and turned himself into a political fugitive a convicted political fugitive. That's that's a horrible combination. Now, Wakambwili can can leave and you know, wherever he's gone, he can recoup and you know, cuz Wakambwili by his own admission, you know, let's not forget, Wakambwili did say over and over and over again, he did tell us that anytime he wanted to go to England, he can go to England for tea, he can fly there for lunch. So the issue of money is, is neither here nor there. Vakam Bwili is a man of means. He's extremely wealthy, according to himself. He's a man of uh, financial girth. So I'm not worried that Vakam Bwili is gonna be okay wherever he goes, because he's, he's, he's got lots of money. But what I foresee happening is, him going wherever he's going to go, whether that's it, uh, 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 Zimbabwe, of course, he's gone to Zimbabwe in order to go somewhere else. I would imagine that he would go to England to join his, his wife. I would, I would imagine that because that's where I would go. I mean, where else am I going to go? I would imagine that he's going to, he's going to literally adopt this new attitude of, you know what, I've crossed the line. I'm just going to be a, a political fugitive, fugitive in exile. And, and then I'm going to speak to the Zambian people on foreign soil. And, and, and then he'll do that. And, and he'll have an audience, you know. But I would have preferred that Wakambwili stay here, accept what the government offered him, uh, take it, even if it meant he goes to prison, jail, uh, f for the time, whatever duration that he was supposed to be there. If his, if his appeal goes through, great. If it doesn't, then, you know, spend whatever that is in jail a few months. And then you come out and you're a free man. But running, literally escaping, and becoming a political fugitive in the hopes that he can ride it out until 2026. Because the idea here is that Wakam Willi in his mind thinks, well, if I go to a foreign country, I don't have to deal with prison. I don't have to deal with my two term, my two year uh, uh, prison conviction on charges of forgery. I don't have to deal with my five months of prison sentencing on charges of hate speech. I can just live in a foreign country and then speak to the Zambian people in the comfort of my home in London or in the comfort of my home in the Maldives or in the comfort of my home in Madagascar or in the comfort of my home in Bogota, Colombia. Wherever he goes, what's going to happen is that he'll be he'll lay low for a few months and then he'll start now addressing the Zambian people from wherever he is. The hope is that he will gather enough support and cause enough um, uh, angst, political angst, and hope that HH loses in 2026 so that whoever wins would pave way for Kambwili to come back and become a Zambian citizen again. That is not a strategy. It's not a strategy because HH is not a dictator. HH is not someone that's come, and I find I find this strange that Bakam Bwili has released an audio tape where he's begging, he's pleading with the president to squash his cases. 
the same group of people that accuse HH of meddling in the judicial branch of government are the same people that are appealing to HH to manipulate the judicial system <laughs> in government. I, I find that disingenuous. I find that curious. Do, don't you find that curious? I find that curious. So it's, it's, uh, I think it's a long road and I feel sad that Vakam really has done this because here in Zambia he has lots of property. He has, he, he has a lot going for him here. If he goes to England, what's he going to do in England? Huh? You tell me. What, he's going to sit around in England and, and, and what, go down shopping on, on, on Regent Street in the morning and have coffee? In, in, in Trafalgar Square, huh? And then go visit as a tourist, visit Buckingham Palace at 4.30 in the afternoon and then have tea. That's not his forte. He is better suited here because this is his home. And, and whatever consequences he has to face, he has to face them head on. You know, and of course we're praying that he gets better and we don't want him sick, we don't want him ailing. God forbid that he dies. <laughs> well, he's he's no longer in the Zambian in Zambia's custody. So whatever happens to him now is really it's it's, it's of his doing. Had he died in Zambia's custody, oh Zambians you'd have blamed HH? Hmm? Yeah? That's what you guys would be saying. But now, Lakambwili is out of Zambia's custody. So everything that happens, anything that happens to him, is really would be of his own doing. It would be of his own machinations. And I think it's really sad to, to gamble like that, to take that gamble and say, well, I'm going to leave and then I'm going to talk to Zambia from England and then hope in 2026 that the Zambian people remove HH so that I can come back to Zambia as, as, a, as a political hero from exile. Mwakambwili is not a political hero, let's be clear, okay? He's not. Number two, if he were to come back and depend on that strategy, he's, uh, he's skating on thin ice because that is not a strategy. It's not workable. It's not doable. It's not. Alrighty. Well, I thought I'd share that with you guys. Thanks for listening. Bye. Alright, that's all for you today, lovely viewers. If you did enjoy the video, please don't forget to leave a comment in the comment section below. Tell me what you think about the video you just watched in the comment section below. I'll be super glad to hear from you, lovely viewers. Once again, I go by the name of Mutatim Pondum. I love you, peace. I gotta go.